Oh, no, I'm Shi Hu. I'm going to talk about time memory trade offs in symmetric cryptography. This is joint work with Wei Dai and Stefano Tessaro. Traditionally, security is proved against the adversaries that have bounded time complexity and query complexity. The goal of security proofs is, almost always, to overbound the advantage of an adversary in terms of its time complexity and query complexity Q. In this work, we target concrete security. We would like this bound to be as precise as possible. However, the memory complexity is another important factor that affects the feasibility of an attack. In fact, many cryptanalytic attacks achieve time memory trade-offs. That is, given decreased usage of memory, the time consumption of an attack will increase, sometimes significantly. A memory-bounded setting usually emits better security guarantees in terms of the number of queries and the time needed to break the system. So ideally, we would like to prove an upper bound on the advantage, which also depends on the memory complexity of the adversary. This is, however, not very easy, and only recently we have seen progress in the memory-bounded setting. To see what the challenges are and how memory affects security, let us take a simplified version of randomized counter mode encryption as an example. The encryption algorithm upon encrypting text M first samples a random MB string R. Then it evaluates PRFF with a secret TSK and the input R to get a mask, and now puts the random bits R and the mask plaintext together as its ciphertext. The classical textbook security theory then ignores the memory complexity of the adversary. It outperforms the best IDCP security advantage for an adversary running in time T and encrypting Q messages. This upper round is in terms of the PRF security advantage for F and the additional information theoretic term that only depends on the Q. The Q square over big N tells us the scheme is secure only when Q is smaller than square root of big N, where big N equals 2 to a small n. This is due to the fact that the randomly sampled R's would collide with good probability when Q is around square root of big N. So our attack is to simply record all queries until a condition is found to break a scheme. This attack, however, appears to require memory. And therefore, we would like to see how the upper bound changes if we consider the memory of the adversary. Such a bound was only proved recently by Jaeger and Tessaro and subsequently improved by De Neuer. For this bound, the information theoretic term becomes S times Q over big N. This term implies there exists a time memory trade-off because the smaller the memory, the more messages we need to encrypt to distinguish. Actually, proving this result is quite involved. And to show the tightest possible bound, we need to use techniques from communication complexity. We also know that essentially the same bound can be proved when F is a pseudo random permutation by using a version of a PRF PRP switch lemma that takes memory into account. Of course, this is about one specific construction. The question we ask in this work is what is the highest security one a construction can achieve in terms of the number of messages that can securely be encrypted in a bounded memory setting. Even further, can we obtain a trade-off that emits Q to be larger than big N for small memory? Note that Q larger than big N is impossible to achieve via standard techniques without bounded memory. This is interesting because it would allow us to reduce the domain size of the underlying PRF while still securely encrypting a large number of messages. A bit more precisely, the main contributions of this paper is to study the security of two natural symmetric encryption schemes in a memory bounded setting. The first scheme is a sample that extract scheme proposed by Tessero and through Vegadem, and the second scheme is a KXOR scheme by Bernier, Goderick, and Kraftzik. Both schemes depend on parameter K, which corresponds to a number of calls to the underlying PRF, and achieve better and better security as K increases. In both settings, the trade-offs are the Q to be larger than big N for small memory bound S and sufficiently large K. In order to analyze the constructions, we use a number of techniques, some of which are normal. For example, the proof of ST relies on tighter hybrids via KL divergence, and the normal use of a decomposition lemma by Goose et al. For KXOR, we leverage a connection between the security of KXOR and the nest decoding of KXOR codes. In particular, we show a new and tighter combinatorial nest decoding bound for the KXOR code, which is of independent interest. We started with the construction of ST scheme. ST can be regarded as a generalization of a counter mode encryption. First, 
instead of sampling one random R, we sample K random values R1 to RK, which we are going to refer to as probes in the following. Then we evaluate all K probes in the function F, concatenate the results, and apply an extractor to obtain a mask for the plant text. The cipher text is composed of the K probes R1 to RK, the seed of the extractor, and the mask plant text. Here, specifically, to get the clamp bound, we choose a two universal hash function as the extractor. The complexity of a scheme depends on the parameter k, and we expect that the security of the scheme will increase as k increases. But the main challenge is to understand quantitatively how. Previously, the Sandler and through Vegalam showed that the security of a bound of two can achieve up to big n. However, the statement is only proven to be true when k is larger than small n, even for a very small amount of memory. In our work, we show a much better result, which already gives strong guarantees for a constant number of probes k. When we have a plant text block size being one, or constant, essentially the security bound implies that at least big n over s to the k queries are needed for our attack to achieve constant advantage. For example, if a memory S is less than big N to the 0 0.99, then only constant number of probes are needed to achieve Q larger than big N. It is important to note that the PIF advantage can be small even if T is much larger than the big N, as long as the key length is larger than log T. In our paper, we also have another version of theorem for the PRP instantiation, and a more theoretical construction that saves randomness usage. Now, to prove a man theorem, we need to show that each mask plant text goes to an independent uniform distribution. We follow the standard approach by first replacing a PRF with a truly random function, which costs us a PRF advantage. Then the man focus is to show that the two, oh, two hybrids are indistinguishable in an information theoretic sense, given Q queries and S bit memory bound. Here, our first step is to cast a problem as a special case of a streaming distinguishability setting that we are going to introduce. In the streaming model we consider, there are two streams, X and Y, each of Q and random elements. The goal of the streaming adversary is to distinguish these streams. The process is divided into Q stages. Within each stage, the adversary receives a single stream element and the state from the previous stage then it outputs a bounded side state to the next stage. When the adversary receives the final qth stream element and the state from the stage q minus one, then it makes the prediction by outputting a zero one value. The advantage of the adversary a distinguishing two streams is defined as priority of a outputting one when receiving the stream x minus the priority of a outputting one when receiving the stream y. In particular, in our case, we are interested in the following two streams. For every element xi in the stream x, we have xi contains all the probes, the randomly sampled seed, and the uniform L bit stream. Then yi contains all the probes, the randomly sampled seed, and the extracted mask for the L bit plain text message. And then we have all the sides of states sigma bounded by S bit. Here, we point out that the advantage of distinguishing the two targeted hybrids over all S-bit bounded adversaries that ask Q queries is upper bounded by the advantage of distinguishing the two streams of net Q over all streaming adversary with S-bit state size bound. This can be proved by memory tight reduction. So we only need to upper bound the advantage of an S-bit bounded adversary in the streaming model. And in fact, we can turn this into a problem of knower bounding and appropriately defined channel entropy. In particular, by hybrid argument, it is enough to look at one single stage and study the distribution of the YI conditional on the state of the adversary so far. We will use a formula lemma that is derived by, from the improved hybrid argument by Jaeger and Tessero and can be proved via KL divergence. Concretely, this number tells us that it is enough to look at the channel entropy of the extracted L bit mask, conditioned on the received state sigma m minus one, the probes, and the seed. And we would like the term to be as close to L bits as possible to minimize the entropy loss. Now our goal is to prove a claim that for each query, the channel entropy term is close to L bits, with entropy loss of roughly S over big N to the K. 
Clearly, if we can prove this, then we obtain the desired upper bound. In fact, we can simplify the problem a little further. Note that we can think of the state of the adversary of the I minus one states as some randomized leakage of the underlying in random functions. In fact, we are going to be generous and show that the desired lower bound holds even if we look at the arbitrary S bit leakage of the random function. And again, we are going to prove the claim that the shadow entropy is close to L, with entropy loss of roughly S over big N to the K. To get the result, naturally, we want to understand the amount of mean entropy produced by RFR1 to RFRK to plan the extractor. However, the challenge is RF is no longer truly random given the S bit leakage. A solution to overcome the challenge is to approximate RF with S bit leakage by function g that has a set of size s over the domain, such that for any value x in the set, g of x is fixed. And for any, any value x outside the set, g of x is truly random. The approximation is made formal by the decomposition lemma introduced by Goose et al. Here, for simplicity, we just take any formal angle and assume we have such a g. Having the extractor instantiated by the two universal hash function, we apply a version of the leftover hash lemma for shadow entropy. Notice that the negative term is an expectation take over all possible k probe configurations. So we need to understand the main entropy term for any probe configuration. We take a closer look at how the choice of probes would impact the amount of main entropy. Given that G has S values fixed, then some of the random probes will hit at the S fixed values and the others hit at the truly random values. We call those probes hit that hit at the truly random values as good probes. And given the probes hitting at the fixed values contribute no mean entropy, and the probes hitting at the truly random values contribute an equal amount of mean entropy independently, the mean entropy grows linearly as the number of good probes increases. Because the number of good probes ranges from zero to k, we have k plus one different mean entropy levels. Crucially, the higher the mean entropy, the more shadow entropy the extractor outputs will have. Notice that R1 and 2RK are sampled independently, uniformly, at random. We can even explicitly compute the probability of exactly J probes are good, which is a binomial. Now, we just put all the techniques and steps we went through already, and the rest is some calculation. Then, we obtain desired lower bound for the entropy, and hence we prove the trade-off. Now, we start to discuss about the KXOR scheme, slightly different from the ST construction. The KXOR construction XORs the PRF outputs as a plant text mask after sampling the K probes. Instead of applying an extractor to concatenate the PRF outputs, the KXOR construction was first proposed by Bernier, Goddard, and Krafzik. They also proved a bound, which is of course memoryless and holds in a regime where the number of queries is upper bounded by a big N. We can also derive a suboptimal trade-off using the branching programming techniques, which was recently used by Garg, Koteri, and Raz to study a time memory trade-off of Golden BRG. However, in our work, we are targeting a bound which is as tight as possible. For KXOR, we prove the following theory then, which implies that big N over S to the K over two queries are needed for constant advantage attack. We also give an attack in our paper to show that such a trade-off cannot be improved for very small memory S. To see how the proof works in the following, we, we look at the case of M equals one for simplicity. The proof starts with, again, replacing a PRF by a truly random function giving us a PRF advantage upper bound. Our focus is still the information theoretic term uh, for the lower two hybrids. As before, we can still cast the whole indistinguishability analysis into the streaming model. Here, we have two streams, X and Y, where Xi contains all probes and a single uniform random bit, and Yi contains all probes and the XOR values of their function evaluation results. And as before, we can upper the advantage of distinguishing our targeted two hybrids by the advantage of distinguishing the two streams of all S-bit bounded 
uh, streaming adversary. Here, it's not worth it to use the tighter hybrid argument via KL divergence. We just use a conventional hybrid argument. Since we are looking at a one bit output random function, now we can use a guessing advantage instead of indistinguishability advantage. We define a guessing advantage of random bit B, conditional on given information Z, to be the maximum advantage of all the predictor adversary A, guessing B, given Z. So by the standard hybrid argument and the indistinguishability to unpredictability argument, we can overbound the advantage of distinguishing and by the sum of all guessing advantage of the ith query when given all the pros and at most s bit of state received from the previous stage. Here, similarly as in the previous case in STE, we can also be generous to consider an arbitrary linkage function for the s bit linkage state, which subsumes all the possible states produced by an adversary. So we will be done if we show the guessing advantage given the probes and an arbitrary S bit linkage is upper bounded by S over big N to the power of K over two. To prove the bound, it will be convenient to adopt a view of the problem in terms of a nested coding of KXOR codes. For this reason, let me briefly recall what a KXOR code is. A KXOR code encodes a table of Boolean function with a small n bit each position of the code word is indexed by a choice of probes R1 to RK, and the corresponding bit of that position is defined as the X word function evaluation results of the probes. For example, suppose we have a two bit input function table row and the K equals two, then we have the K XOR of row table as the following. For each position, the bit equals the X word result of row R1 and row R2. Similarly, we can think of a predictor adversary which given R1 to RK and some side information Z about RF and tries to predict a bit as a noisy code word for the KXOR code. More specifically, after fixing the side information Z of the adversary, we can write down the prediction result of each input probes explicitly, as this would be a noisy code word associated with this Z. If the correctness of probability of this predictor for the fixed Z is at least one plus epsilon over two, then clearly this is equivalent to the fact that the relative distance between the KXOR code and the noisy code were produced by predictor A with input Z is at the most one minus epsilon over two. Now we want to see how this interpretation helps us derive the guessing advantage upper bound. The intuition can be explained graphically. First, the black points are the KXOR encoding of all possible functions. And then we fix choice of you know, the auxiliary information Z defines a noisy code word, which is depicted here as a blue point. We have at the most two to the S noisy code words and given the auxiliary information is at the most S bits. So now let us look at a Hamming bar of radius R that satisfies R over N to the K equals one minus epsilon over two around each noisy code word. And let us imagine that we draw a function RF uniformly at random. Now we have two cases. First of all, if the encoding of the function is outside of all of the Hamming bars, then the advantage of guessing the XOR correctly for this particular choice of function is at the most epsilon. In the other case, if encoding RF hits at some point within the Hamming bars, then the guessing advantage is no longer upper bounded by epsilon. However, the probability of landing inside any of the balls is upper bounded by a two to the s minus n times the nest k epsilon term, in which we define the nest k epsilon as the maximum number of KXOR code words that are within relative distance, uh, one minus the epsilon over two to a ball center. Therefore, what we need is to upper bound the quantity this k epsilon, which is exactly the combinatorial this size from the KXOR code. If we want to use two rows from the literature to obtain a bound on this size, prior works focus on approximate this decoding. And if we use such results, we obtain bounds that lead us to the suboptimal space-time trade-offs. For this reason, our main technical contribution here which is of independent interest, is to prove a tight bound on this side. 
Our proof relies on purely on concentration bound proved via higher moment methods. In conclusion, we gave a better trade off analysis for both sample than extract and cake soil constructions. For STE, we proved that at least big N over S to the K queries is needed to break the scheme. For cake soil, we proved the slightly weaker lower bound of big N over S to the K over 2 for breaking the scheme. Both trade-offs allow the scheme to tolerate Q larger than big N queries in bounded memory setting. The result of cake soil also complements analysis in BGK for the case of Q larger than big N. Further, in our paper, we have extended our ST scheme to handle multiple plain text blocks. We also provide a proof of ST essentially with TLP instead of PLF. An environment of ST that reduces the randomness used per query. But we still don't know whether the trade-off bound for ST is tight or not, even though aesthetically it looks optimal. And for CAC score, we also provide several attacks and show that the trade-off is tight for very small memory case. However, it is interesting to examine whether the trade-off is tight for general memory and whether we can improve a bound so that it matches the memory that's bound in the queue smaller than the big N case. The full version of our paper can be found on the A print, and thank you. <laughs>